Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Thanks so much for joining us here at After Dark tonight for um, kind of a lightning talk here in the webcast studio. My name is Sam Sharkland, and I'm part of the public programs team that puts these After Darks together week after week, and so thrilled to see you all here. Just out of curiosity, how many of you is this your first time at After Dark? Wow, that's great. Welcome. We're excited to be reaching new audiences continually, and I would be re remiss to say that if you enjoy the night or are interested in some of our upcoming themes, uh, you can check out our calendar, but we also have a really, really great membership that's uh, a fantastic value that you can come to uh, every After Dark this year in 2020. It's a year-long membership uh, for the price of about two and a half admissions. So tonight you can upgrade your ticket for $25 and then have access to the rest of After Darks for 2020, um, which is a great way to celebrate the new year and have a resolution to learn more while having fun and drinking cocktails. I don't know how many of your of you other resolutions involve drinking cocktails, but this is one that you can keep if you buy that membership. Um, this is something that we do week after week. The theme changes. Uh, tonight, the theme is centered around water. I'll talk about that in a moment, but I do want to just let everyone know, not to alarm you or worry you, but we are actually going to be broadcasting this to Facebook Live and YouTube Live tonight. So if our presenter kind of talks to an online audience, fair warning, it's not uh, directed at you, but should all be seamless once we get rolling. But why are we looking at water? Well, it's quite ubiquitous. It surrounds us here on the pier. It's the Earth's surface is mostly covered in water. We're mostly water. Um, of course, the rains has, have been happening recently, and it's king tides right now, uh, which means that the high tides we're experiencing are extra high at this point. Um, I encourage you to look that up. But we've also recently developed a um, food science part of our website. So museum educator and digital content creator Paul Danstep has put together, again, a little lightning talk about what water does uh, in certain ways to food and how it kind of interacts with some of those things that we enjoy. Um, yeah, so I want to thank you once more for coming. I don't think I need to talk any longer, but please help me welcome to the stage Paul Danstep. Thanks, Sam. Uh, can everyone hear me all right? Okay. So, uh, water is a uh, crucial ingredient in cooking, and actually a good way to approach kitchen science often is to ask yourself, what does this cooking technique look like from the point of view of a water molecule? So, let's look at a little piece of water. A water molecule is two hydrogen atoms attached to a central oxygen atom. Uh, this molecule is uh, bent, so the hydrogens actually like to be clustered on one side, and you can compare that to, say, a carbon dioxide molecule, which also has two smaller atoms attached to a larger central atom. And molecules can actually bend around. They're a little bit flexible, but the carbon dioxide likes to keep its atoms all lined up in a straight line, whereas the water actually uh, prefers to be bent. Uh, water's also actually a little sticky. So if another water molecule floats by slowly enough, a hydrogen in one molecule will get attached to uh, the oxygen in another molecule forming a link called a hydrogen bond. So these guys will be kind of stuck together now. But hydrogen bonds are really weak, so it doesn't take too much commotion for these guys to get separated again. So if you were a water molecule, you'd tend to find yourself in one of three situations. Um, you might be linked to a nearby molecule, which is linked to another molecule, which is linked to some other molecules and so on, forming a big rigid structure. Uh, in this situation, you are ice. Uh, water molecules are restless, so even in ice, there's a little bit of uh, jostling around going on. Um, and actually, this group commotion can get worse and worse, and eventually, there can be so much jiggling that the molecules actually lose hold of each other, and this structure collapses. And at this point, you've melted and are now a liquid. So you bounce around, always kind of bumping into other molecules, but no two molecules stay near each other for very long. Um, if your neighboring molecules start going faster and faster, eventually all these molecules can get really spread out until you're mostly just floating around by yourself. Uh, in this situation, you have boiled and are a gas. And just understanding this much about water can actually give you a great insight to all kinds of questions that come up in the kitchen, like uh, how does a pressure cooker work, or what makes popcorn pop, or how do you make food for astronauts? Um, all of these questions can be approached by just asking yourself, what does this look like from the point of view of a water molecule? So for example, 
Uh, consider a ripe, healthy strawberry. Uh, if we put this in the freezer, so, sorry, if we put this in the freezer, uh, it'll get a little bit bigger and it'll get super hard, like a little rock, like you could really hurt somebody uh, if you threw it at them. And then if you let it warm back up to room temperature, you'll find that the strawberry's gotten really soft and mushy and it's got all these like fluids leaking out of it and stuff. So what happened? Uh, what we want to do is let's go back to the healthy strawberry and what we're going to do is zoom in on its water molecules and we're going to think about what does this process look like from the perspective uh, of the water in the strawberry. So as we get way down here, you can see these are the cells that make up the strawberry. And the thing I want you to notice is that they're all like really well defined. They have clear boundaries and they're all sort of tightly packed together and they're full of water. So when we freeze this, uh, the water in those cells is uh, going to turn to ice. So here we can see water ice forming. And the thing to notice is that the regions of frozen water are expanding. And at, at a molecular level, what's going on is uh, liquid mole water molecules are attaching themselves uh, to the growing crystal structure. So these water molecules take up more room when they're ice uh, than when they're liquid. So we have ice on the left side there. And if we go back inside of the strawberry cell, as that ice front grows, it sort of pushes around these other larger molecules. And eventually, the ice starts pushing on a group of molecules in a special formation, uh, the cell wall. And this is the structure that forms the boundary of those cells. And as it freezes and expands, the cell wall kind of gets bent and ruptured. And as the ice melts, these openings in the cell wall open up even more. So if we zoom back out to the cellular level, we can see that those cells are not well organized anymore. They've been sort of disturbed by the ice. So the cell walls have been punctured, and all of these intracellular fluids are leaking out. And if we zoom out, we can see that the strawberry has become soft and lost its shape, basically because it's been shredded at a cellular level by water ice. Uh, this is another example. So this is an ice cream sandwich. Uh, so let's ask, is it possible to uh, dry out this sandwich without melting it? So normally, when you want to dry something out, you can heat it up. But that's not going to work in this case. So we need a different uh, strategy. So most of the water in an ice cream sandwich is actually in the form of ice. And left to its own devices, uh, this ice will tend to collapse into a liquid. Uh, but if we look at where the ice meets the air, we can see all these air molecules floating around. So if we put our ice cream sandwich in a vacuum chamber, we can actually get rid of all these molecules. And now, without all of these air molecules exerting pressure and pushing down on the ice, water molecules that break off of this structure will just float away into the air, uh, becoming a gas without ever forming a liquid uh, in a process called sublimation. So here we can see uh, sublimation at work. This is a piece of ice in a vacuum. And what you can see is that it's, it's sort of disappearing without ever forming a wet puddle. So if we allow our ice cream sandwich to thaw in a vacuum, uh, all of the water molecules inside of it will just disappear into the air, leaving behind these dried out remains, which are normally known as astronaut food. So this is a process called freeze drying. Uh, it's a really handy way to preserve food because um, Without any water left uh, for microbes to grow in, this ice cream sandwich will now last forever. Um, so I want to say a little bit about where this water work comes from. If, if you Google something like how many ounces in a cup, first of all, Google will just tell you uh, the answer. But if you scroll down, there are still web pages for some reason to answer this question as well. And somewhere in that top 10, you will find an exploratorium web page, this one, which was from a cooking project we, bit, we did back in 2002. And back then, it was really novel to be getting cooking advice over the internet. So this page was really popular like over 15 years ago. And the Exploratorium website is huge. There's like 33,000 pages. And this is the most popular page on the entire website. Um, we get something like a million hits to this every month, which means more people will see this website in a year that, or in a month than will visit this museum in an entire year. Um, and it's not like we're proud of it or anything. It's just a random chart, right? This is not the kind of learning we're interested in. So there's no inquiry. There's no interactivity. And so for years, we've been being like, man, we should really do something about this. There's like an avalanche of people coming to this page. And there's really no way for them to find their way to the other kinds of things we make. So um, a couple months ago, we just launched. We did some new content development. Uh, we did launched a new Science of Food site. There's now a link to this from that conversions page. Um, 
and uh, you can kind of think of it like an online magazine, and this is sort of the first issue we made just to kind of see what it would be like to do a test, and it's just all about water in food. So uh, some of what you've seen today are some of the things we have on here, but there's a lot of other um, assets, and all of them are just about thinking about water molecules and using the properties of water molecules to understand food and cooking better. So uh, you know, we go through how temperature and pressure are related inside of a pressure cooker. Um, we have a thing on brining, which explains that when you put meat into a salt bath, the water molecules, but not the salt, enter uh, the meat tissue. Uh, this is inside of a popcorn kernel, so those dark things are starch, and as the popcorn pops, the water molecule pushes the starch apart, and the difference between a kernel and a pop popcorn is just that the pop popcorn has had its starch kind of pushed out and fluffed by the expanding uh, water. So uh, you should check out that site. There's a lot of other uh, interesting stuff there, but our main point is that, um, yeah, you can answer a lot of questions in the kitchen by just asking yourself, what does this look like from the point of view of a water molecule? Uh, and that's the talk. For those of you watching online, thanks for joining us, and be sure to check in next week when I believe we're doing tactile. Um, that's the talk. Thank you so much. <laughs>